Greetings, John Tiller Software, Panzer Campaigns players, to my discussion of defence using the Minsk 44 Gold module. As many of you will know, this module depicts Operation Bagration, which was the massive Soviet offensive conducted in mid-1944, which destroyed Army Group Center. So I thought this would be a good module to test out some defensive ideas. Usually against the AI, I prefer to be the, t the attacker because it is generally held that the AI does a better job on defense than offense. Well, it'll never have a better opportunity than being the Soviet in Operation Bagration. For the purpose of our discussion, I've selected 0624 underscore 21 Rogachev. Initially, elements of three Soviet rifle corps were flung against two German infantry divisions. Their objective was to breach the Drute River line. This struggle across the Drute River continued all day with only limited gains as compared with other advances in the opening phases of the battle. So despite being overwhelmed by numbers, perhaps we'll have a chance to hold on in this scenario. For the purpose of our discussion, I'm going to put the Russian AI on automatic. So this is the scene after the Soviet AI has finished its first turn. So plenty of Soviet units uh, attempting to break through our lines. The main feature on the map is the Drute River. Uh, which is often bordered by swampy terrain, clear hexes, villages, and in the south there are a couple of uh, steel bridges, although on our side at least they've been uh, blown up. And moving further back, uh, we have forest hexes uh, and swamp all the way through. So certainly it seems opportunities there to use the terrain to our advantage. The AI will have to use engineers to be able to cross the river. If you go to the user manual, page 74, They will either have to use bridging operations by their engineers or ferrying. So uh, make sure you're familiar with those two parts of engineer operations. So we'll turn the units back on again. So our main issue is there are stacks of Russian units with ample artillery support. So would it be wise of us with, for instance, this unit, the 7th Company, 2nd Battalion, 445th Grenadier Regiment, to attack three battalions of Russian infantry plus all that defending fire. I think all we're asking for at this stage is to get our unit disrupted and make it easier to be assaulted or attacked by the Soviet in the subsequent turn. 
So the general plan initially will be to desist from uh, attacking the Soviets and drawing defensive fire, mainly because, for instance in this area, they cannot cross the river. So for this chap here, we might as well just uh, retreat him one hex and he can't be attacked. So we'll go further down the the track here. So this guy here once again we could leave them there and they just face the attack from the the Russians. Now, obviously, once they get engineers in proximity, we're going to have to defend. But initially, this will be our, our tactic on the first turn anyway, is just to save our units as much as we can. Now, further down south, this is Rogachev City. As you can see, the river goes through here and further back. Bridges blown. One of the units is disrupted. Town hexes, but they have these engineer units in the wings which no doubt will uh, attempt to build a bridge. So in the first part of this uh, game, or this scenario, we need to disrupt their engineers, because if they're disrupted, they can't conduct ferrying operations or build bridges. Now secondly, as the defender, we want to try and make movement um, as difficult as possible for our opposition. One of the real good ways of doing this, and especially in this narrow frontage here, is to turn these hexes into rubble. Now rubble triples the movement cost. So that will be uh, another of our tactics to try and slow down the Soviet advance. So, engineers. Best way to attack them at this stage is by artillery. Uh, because we not paying, playing with the fog of war, we can see the defensive factors. So these guys are now down to 220 men. If we can get them below 100, uh, that reduces the probability that they'll be successful in ferrying or building a bridge. So ultimately, uh, our goal will be to knock them below 100, but initially we want to disrupt them. Now this engineer unit being in travel mode means he's also at 50% uh, defence. And when they are building bridges or ferrying, they only have 50% defence. So there's a couple of factors we need to keep in mind. Right, so disrupted is exactly what we want, and we've turned that hex into rubble. So that's a, a double win for us there. Right, so we'd like to turn this one into rubble at some stage. He's uh, just infantry, and they're infantry as well. So this guy's in travel mode, 
and an engineer and it's a city hex which isn't rubble so I think there's more advantage to us at this early stage because remember these front units cannot move across they can attack our two units here but they cannot cross the river so we'll in fact what I might do is check our aircraft HE-111 are great at creating rubble Sixty men, so that is a great result. So it's turned uh, the hex into rubble, which is excellent, and we're down to 140 men. So it shouldn't take as long to reduce him below uh, 100. Normally, with my artillery, I like attacking the uh, enemy artillery, but in this case. The engineers are far more important uh, to destroy than even their artillery. So we continue. And also, if we one, two, so essentially we want to make all these hexes here in the first number of turns, uh, turn them into rubble so that any other units coming to support them. They're going to get held up in these hexes. Okay, there's another engineer unit in a town hex. And he's in travel mode. Doesn't get much better than that. Disrupt is good. But no, no rubble. Uh, no engineers there. Uh, there's an engineer battalion in that hex there. It's industrial, 50%. So perhaps we'll try for a rubble hex there. Okay, so no rubble, but that's okay. So try and be as efficient as we can. Move further up the map. Stockpile. So actually, to be fair, we should only attack spotted units and pretend that we're playing with the fog of war. So fortunately all those units I attacked just then were all spotted so that's okay. It's uh, while there's benefits of playing on automatic so you can see what the enemy does, see the factors and get a feel for how your artillery works and the strength of uh, enemy units. Normally I play with fog of war but I think uh, for a learning purpose on automatic can be beneficial. So we'll go up here, like for instance this engineer unit, technically we can't see him. So we won't attack him. Okay, there's an engineer unit in transport mode. This hex here. Ah, range exceeded. Okay. Do I have any artillery back here? Nope. Can't make it, can he? He probably won't be able to make it either. So we'll continue. A 
looking for out uh, this one there. Wow, they really took it hard. Okay, well, gonna have to tech ordinary old infantry. Disappointing, they're not disrupting. So let's, okay, you can tack those down there. Ah, excellent. I love a disruption in the morning. So we have no more aircraft, we've used our artillery. <coughs> so we check our condition of our units against the uh, fire. As I said, I'm not going to attract the defensive fire of the Soviets at this stage. Now what we can consider doing is grabbing our engineers uh, We'll put them out and we can have an attempt, starting from the next turn, of laying some mines. Now mine laying is uh, really, really hit and miss. <laughs> so I'll show you this as we go along. By stacking engineers together you have a higher probability of laying a mine or being successful. So if we press... So we only have one chance in 20 of being successful in laying a minefield. By stacking two engineer units together, we've got one chance in 10. So it certainly hit and miss as far as that goes but we might as well put that chance on the table other than our engineers just sitting there having a cup of tea or something rightio now at this stage there's not a lot else we can really do uh, we can get busy doing bits and pieces and digging in more areas and that sort of stuff but at this stage we'll just leave it at that uh, artillery against their engineers and then moving our infantry units 
out of danger. They, when we need them to defend a hex, we move them in and rotate the fatigue ones out and put fresh ones in. So I'll go on now to do turn two for the AI. So during the AI turn, extensive use of artillery, a fair bit of moving about. Uh, I noticed that some of our units were disrupted. So let's see what damage is being caused. Smiles will start at the top. With our units being in bunkers up here, I don't think there's too much to worry about. So down here, engineer unit. So that is definitely a priority target for us. So we need to disrupt this guy so that he can't ferry or start building a bridge in the next turn. Engineers. Excellent, so his engineer unit is now disrupted. So that is our number one goal. So we move further along the river. Ah, we have an engineer unit here clearing obstacles. So we definitely need to give him a bit of love. Let's say we've got enough artillery. Oh, maximum range exceeded. Oh no. One, one, zero. Blast. Okay, well that's not good news for us. So in this case, there's nothing for it, I don't think, unless I can get... No, he'll be out of range. I think he was out of range by one hex. Yes. So we're going to have to commit our ground forces. Or our infantry, more accurately. And there's an example of the Soviet defensive fire. And unfortunately, we didn't uh, disrupt him, but this turn he's clearing obstacles, so we can't ferry in the same turn. So that'll be interesting to see what happens there. So we come further down along the river, looking for our engineer friends. Aha, there's another one. Oh, 
Okay, so he's down to 107 men. But we need a disruption. I don't think he's got I think he's gonna be out of range. Right, so that's not good. We need to look at that again. They're all rifles and the engineer units disrupted, so we can we're happy with that. Okay. One disrupted. Okay, so we've got to try and get this guy disrupted now. Beautiful. Uh, okay, now. He wasn't. No, that's. Was that one there, wasn't it? Da, 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 da. Oh, there it is. Yep, that one there. Oh. Excellent. I thought he wasn't going to disrupt there for a moment. So we keep moving down to the south. So there we go. We've got those three rubble hexes in the south. So we need to increase those. And they're all rifle regiments along the front. So that's okay. So this hex here is not rubble, so I like using a HE, oh, two HE-111s, how good is that? Okay, uh, da, 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 the other engineer regiment. Excellent result there. They disrupted. So what I might do, I am tempted to use our HE-111s against one of our engineer units up north, which I didn't disrupt the first time. Because they're these guys are more or less harmless at the moment. Okay, so we'll keep looking along. Just making sure. All rifle regiments. Ah, okay. Well, only do it to spotted units. As I mentioned previously. Right, it was this chap here I was a little bit concerned about. So, now unfortunately. That hex was a clear hex. It would be much better if it was a village, because we would have had a chance of uh, making uh, rubble. Also, notice that the obstacles here are in lower case, which means 
Uh, they've at least cleared a lane through there, so a bit disappointed he didn't disrupt. But it's down to 72 men, so his bridge probability is will be reduced from you know 45, maybe 15% to 30, so one in three. So we'll just have to see next turn. Also, note uh, during this turn. Our engineers weren't successful in laying mines. As I say, it's a real chancy exercise, that one. So next is to look at our troops here. I'm going to move our disrupted guy back one. Oh, he's fired. Okay, so that is about it. So we can check our artillery again. Hit G to see which... Uh... So once again, we'll just keep hammering our friendly engineers. Okay. A little bit concerned I didn't create a rubble hex down here. Uh, okay, we'll just hammer the engineers. Right, I was hoping to turn that uh, industrial hex into rubble, but didn't quite manage it. So what we need to do now is check our units facing uh, uh, the Russians are not too damaged, so we'll move him back for a break. Move him in. Move this guy back for a break. Move him in. He's okay. Obviously going to face a fair bit of fire. He's still okay at 23 fatigue. Oh, he's disrupted, so I need to find him a replacement. Oh, boy, he's got to go put him into T mode. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure I can withdraw him for the moment because... It's only an infantry unit there. Go up to here. They're in pretty good nick. Okay, and that is... Oh, I can't move him because we had to fire, unfortunately. That's about it, so we'll give the AI a shot at it. 